Guardians, what's going on? Blue Knight here. Today, I want to show you how you can solo the Cosmodrome GM, the uh, PsyOps Battlegrounds one. I'll say this off the rip. It's not the most fun GM to solo. It's a pretty tough GM. Took me quite a few tries to finally get it. But uh, this is the build that I did it with. You'll see in the video that I don't quite look like this because I changed my drip up a little bit because I, I ended up getting a new Dawn Chorus, um, the new Dawn Chorus ornament. But other than that, let's jump into the build. In the subclass, we're using Daybreak as our super. We're gonna be doing our Healing Rift, Burst Glide, Celestial Fire, and Healing Grenade. We're gonna be pumping a lot of resources in, into getting our grenade back. So that's why we want a Healing Grenade. A touch of Flame is going to give us Restoration times two. Uh, and then Heat Rises, we're going to be able to fire weapons, melee, and throw grenades while gliding. Onto the Fragments. These first three Fragments are going to be based on Solar Ignitions. So this first one, Ember of Eruption, your Solar Ignitions have increased area of effect. Ember of Char, your Solar Ignitions spread Scorch to affected targets. And then Ember of Ashes, you apply more Scorch stacks to targets. So our Eruptions are in a larger area of effect. They spread more scorch and then we're using ember of empyrean so that way we can keep our restoration times two whenever we really need it the most onto the weapons we're using malicious birthright if you don't have something with disorienting grenades or anything like that in the kinetic slot you can use something like fell teradiddle or vulpicula both of these have shoot to loot it's an amazing perk to have when you're soloing these gms um, this build though we're not doing anything with orbs so we don't have to worry about creating orbs or picking up orbs or anything like that we're just um we're primarily focusing on polaris lance and fixed odds speaking of polaris lance though um we this is our bread and butter this is going to be the weapon that we primarily use and then fixed odds we have advanced field prep and incandescent we have uh so the field prep whenever you crouch you reload faster and then it gives you um advanced or it gives you more reserves and then incandescent, we're going to be using this primarily for ad clear. So that's why incandescent, it spreads scorch. We spread more scorch with our, with our subclass. Looking at the artifact here, we are not going to be utilizing anything in the first column. So whatever you want to run, you can run. One good thing about Fel Teradiddle and Vulpicula, one's a hand cannon, one's a combat bow. Both have shoot to loot. And both in the season can stun on stop champions. Those are going to be the champions that cause you the biggest issue in this GM, in my opinion. So if you do want something that can stun um, a champion, I would suggest getting something that can stun an unstop champion uh, like one of these two. But once again, first column for this build, we're not going to be utilizing anything. Second column, we're only going to be utilizing Kindling Trigger. Uh, so Radiant causes solar weapons to apply Scorch to unscorched combatants. We're going to be applying more Scorch because of our subclass. So uh, that's why we're using that. And then we're going to use from whence you came every once in a while, but, it, you know, because there are some scorn combatants, but I'm not too terribly worried about them. Um, our must-have, though, is Kindling Trigger. Second column, must-have, Flint Striker, Rapid Solar Weapon, Precision Hits, and Rapid Solar Weapon, Final Blows, Grant Radiant. This is how we're going to be able to stun the Barrier Champs with Polaris Lance, because Radiant Effects will stun Barrier Champs, and then Ignitions will, spun, will stun Unstops. The fourth column, the only thing we're going to be utilizing is Revitalizing Blast. So causing damage with a solar ability weakens champions and bosses for a short duration. That's why we want to have Celestial Fire. It's a ranged melee that has a pretty far range and will be able to weaken bosses and champions for a short time. Just It allows us to do more damage. And then fifth column, both of these are a must-have. We have Rays of Precision and Solo Operative. Uh, Rays of Precision, while Radiant, Solar Precision, Final Blows, cause combatants to ignite. The whole shtick with... Polaris Lance is based on precision hits. So this is based on precision hits. This is based on precision hits. Just Polaris Lance is in a really good spot this season. And then solo operative, because we are going to be doing the solo, it allows us to do increased damage to all combatants. Let's look at the armor that we ran. Uh, I would suggest getting resilience up to 100 first. And then I intrinsically have 111 discipline. Uh, I actually have 101 with this armor on. And then one of the subclass elements here, Ember of Char, gives us plus 10 discipline. 
I want to run Ember of Char though, so we're just gonna stick. I know anything over a hundred doesn't matter, but we're just we're going with 111 discipline. Uh, so yeah, if you can only get one thing to 100, make sure it's resilience first. It might this it might be a little bit slower, but 100%. I would want you to get your resilience up to 100. Looking at our helmet though, we've got Dynamo, so it reduces super cooldown when using your class ability near targets. You'll see in the video, there are a few times, and I'll even talk about it in the voiceover, that I should utilize this more. And I think I'm going to do this GM again where I do utilize it more. And then Heavy Ammo Finder, uh, it increases the drop chance of heavy ammo on kill. We're going to be using an exotic uh, primary ammo weapon, so it's going to help us find ammo more quickly. The gloves, we're using double impact induction, so causing damage with a powered melee attack reduces your grenade cooldown. Like I said, uh, we're going to be pumping a lot of resources into getting our grenade back, just in case if we need it. And then we got harmonic loader, so that way either of the solar weapons that we have, we can reload faster. To the chest piece, I 100% would recommend running either or double arc single void like I have, or if you can afford it where you don't have a four energy cost on your first, I would run single arc, single void with concussive damper. That's what I want to run. I can't though, because I don't have enough energy because I have to have this plus 10 resilience mod. So pick and choose whichever one, but you definitely want to have arc and void resistance mods on. Uh, onto the legs, we've got double solar holster. So that way um, our solar weapons reload faster while stowed. Uh, our solar weapons will reload while stowed faster. That's why we have two of them. And then Harmonic Scavenger, uh, so that way whenever we pick up heavy ammo we create, we'll be able to get more of it for fixed odds. Spoiler alert, we don't create a lot of heavy ammo in certain situations, and it kind of puts us in a pickle, but you'll see that in the video. On to the Bond, we're running Double Bomber, so it reduces grenade cooldown when using your class ability. Again, we're pumping a lot of resources into getting our grenade back. And then Proximity Ward, whenever we finish... Um, somebody it gives us a powerful overshield the reason why we want to do that is because in two spots on this uh, in this gm we have to finish ghosts if you don't take everything out before you finish the ghost you'll get, start getting shot at this powerful overshield will will can help you it can help keep you from dying i'm not saying that it will but it's it gives you a better chance of living if you have this on I believe that's it. So without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, like I said before, we're doing this in a voiceover. Here at the very beginning, we're going to go um, into this little garage area. We're not going to leave there as best as we can. Um, we're going to take everything out. There's going to be two barrier champs. So just take everything out, and there's no particular order. Um, obviously, if you do damage to the barrier champs, then you want to try and focus them because they can heal. Um, here I was able to stun lock this first barrier champ in a good spot to where I could just continuously put damage into him. Take out some of the dregs and other other things around. I believe all that's left now is another barrier champ. So there he is. We're going to just use heat rises or you know the ability to glide and shoot our weapon at the same time. Um, we're just taking this guy out. Once this guy gets taken out, there'll be a little diagram that pops up. Hopefully, I'll be able to better help you explain this first encounter and what we're going to do. All right, so he's taken out. All right, so right here at the very beginning, there's going to be a, uh, a ship that drops in five combatants at the number one spot in the top right of this picture. On the bottom of the image is zero. That's where we're going to start at. So we're going to go from zero to one along the path. That's the, that's where, the way that we have to bring this payload. 
you have to be careful because the second ship will come in and it'll drop arc snipers off either at two or three. If they're at two, you want to stay on the right side of the payload. If they're at three, you want to stay on the left side of the payload. The reason being is because we don't want to be taken out by the arc snipers. We are running double arc resistance, but still those snipers are going to two shot you and there's, you know, four to six of them. So just be, you don't have to peek them, play smart, stay on either side of the payload, depending on where the snipers spawn in at. Once it gets the 33%, once the payload gets the 33% and the brig spawns in, then we won't the snipers will despawn. We won't have to deal with them anymore. Um, so without further ado after, and then also at the very end, we're going to go from zero to one, um, being careful of two and three, and then we're going to jump up to five. So this is just kind of, um, how I envision it and let's get it going. Okay. So we're going to start moving it. We're going to swap to fixed odds. When I figure out which side the snipers are going to be on, we're going to go to the opposite side. They're on the right there, so we're going to go on the left side. I'm going to splash the grenade. Luckily, the uh, the wretches that spawn in there were kind of in a row, enough for me to just take out. Get a little bit low here, but I'm kind of trusting. I'm putting a lot of trust in my uh, restoration times, too. I do have to reload. I realize that I've got 10 seconds left on my restoration, so I'm okay. We'll take that guy out. We're back up to five seconds on our restoration. Here we go. We got it to 33% without even worrying about the snipers. After that, we come up here. There's going to be four sets of people dropped off by two ships. So this first ship is going to drop off two sets. And the second ship's going to come in. And they're also going to drop off two sets. The first ship's not going to have any shielded guys. The second ship is going to have two shielded guys. Um, they, You don't have to t come up here and take these guys out but they will need to be taken out before the brig dies. So just, in my opinion, you might as well go ahead and take them out here. Usually what I do is I will um, break their shield with my with my heavy, but this time I realized I got plenty of heavy ammo. All right, so now we're gonna take out everything else. See, one shot from that Vandal took me down below half health. You will get two shot by these by those vandals um, you don't necessarily have to clear everything out like I'm doing here but I just went ahead and um, aggroed everything to this back corner here and they kind of funnel in one at a time I'm trying to proc an ignition on that servitor but he's not letting me do it jump over here on the right he's got a shield back so we're gonna pop out a shield Again, I'm trying to create as many ignitions as I can. I know there's a little melee guy next to me, but I'm not too terribly worried about it. A lot of the guys won't come up on the concrete uh, unless you're close to the edge of the concrete like I was there. The other guy just backed up. All right, take these guys out. If you don't have a good damage weapon, um, then the brig might take a little while. You know, I don't have too terribly much. I'm about half on my reserves for my machine gun. Um, I've got, there's plenty of, of special ammo, so I, I do end up using that, but this, uh, this brig encounter is just gonna take a while. That's, that's it, it's just gonna take some time. You can sit anywhere in this area, honestly. Um, I kind of like running around out here in the field because I don't have to worry about, I don't know. I, I'd rather be on high ground, but um, it's not the end of the world if I'm not on high ground. You can shoot the brig anywhere in the legs and the arms and the face anywhere and it does the same amount of damage. There are no crit spots yet on the brig. So we're going to use uh, fixed odds here um, just for a little bit until the ammo. Uh, I think we use it for one more mag here. And I don't want to run out of fixed odds ammo. I also don't want to use my super here because we're going to be saving our super to move the payload again. Hindsight being 2020, I should have supered when the brig first spawned in. I should have supered because by the time the brig dies, you will be 
a good chunk of your super will be back. Um, especially with Dynamo that I have on, I should have utilized that more. Kept the guys alive down low on the right. When I pop my super, I can use my healing rift and it'll have my super. It'll help my super come back faster. I'm trying to proc Envious Assassin on that guy. Finally get it done there. Um, it's a cool perk, but I like this GL just because it has auto-loading holster and disorienting grenades. That's primarily why I use it. Trying to look out for that guy shooting down here. I realize that he's by the payload, just shooting down low on the right side. We're able to pop his barrier there with fixed odds. I got to be careful about not taking too much damage here. He's not wanting to peek me, and I'm not going to go down there to take him out. So we go back to damaging the brig. Get my buttons mixed up there on the swapping. So we have less than two mags left. We have about, you know, a little over a mag and a half left in our fixed odds, so we're not going to be using that that much more. Be careful of those void shots. That's why I suggest running... Um, concussive damper because those shots those void shots um, and the hive boomers and all that stuff they all deal explosive damage so concussive damper will help you know lessen that damage output trying to get trying to break the barrier um, of that art guy with my melee didn't quite work out missed that grenade missed that grenade I'm like alright I can't do it from up here because he's just going to keep rotating around. I'll grab ammo. We'll reload this real quick. We're just going to sit right here behind this blockade. Um, we're going to jump and shoot. In this spot, the brig doesn't seem like they want to move that much. So we're just going to keep jump, shoot, jump, shoot, jump, shoot, jump, shoot. This does take a little while. Um, like I said, if you're... I ran this with Wish Ender, and it does work, but the thing about Wish Ender, though, is... Well, I'll say this. The reason why Player Slants is so great is because of the explosive rounds and the seasonal artifact perks. That's really the only reason why Player Slants is so great right now. Um, rocket launchers would be better at doing damage here, but... I like using machine guns to make sure I'm able to keep restoration times two up for as long as I can. Running around here looking for extra ammo. We've got heavy ammo finder on, not energy ammo finder on, or not special ammo finder on, and yet we're still finding all these special bricks. It's a good thing though because we're able to um, we're, we're able to just blink away at the at the boss. Um, we're doing about 16,000 damage, almost 16,000 damage per direct impact uh, with it. May sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more. Those arc shots keep arching over the barricade that I'm in front of and like grazing my head, doing a little bit of damage. So every now and then I put out my healing rift um, like this and I'm able to jump and just keep challenging him. He moved a little bit there. I moved, whichever happened. Um, so I wasn't able to get a good shot off on him. Now, the brig is about to become vulnerable. When the faceplate, you'll hear the faceplate pop off here in a little bit. Um, when that happens, I swap to Polaris Lance. You can stun lock the brig as long as you continuously ignite them. So there's the faceplate popping off. And now we're just going to sit here and lay into him with Polaris Lance. I have yet to have that cannon shoot at me. Uh, the cannon on the brig's shoulder has yet to shoot at me while doing this, but don't take any chances. Stand behind cover. Don't stand still because it will one-shot you if it goes off. If, if it hits you or if you are in the blast radius, it will one-shot you. Also wanted to throw out there um, that this is probably my 25th time attempting this GM and finally getting it. So don't feel discouraged whenever, you know, if you die and you got to keep redoing it up here after you take out the brig there's going to be a barrier uh, we'll take him out after we take him out then we will continue on with the payload 
not everything you're seeing me do will happen in your GM. So you know how the guys, the scions or the, the vandals, the snipers spawned up on the top right? They might spawn up on the top left for you. You know, it, it's all what ifs on this or, or, you know, it's just randomized on this GM in my opinion. All right, so here we're going to escort the payload. I'm looking at all the spots that ships can be at. We're going to focus on this ship here. It's going to drop, again, two shielded guys and three non-shielded guys. We're going to take out two of the non-shielded guys. The thing about Ember of Empyrean and our super is that we're able to... We're able to keep our restoration up with weapon or ability final blows. While our super is an ability. So... We're able to keep up our restoration as long as we can there. Once those Thrall spawn in, those Cursed Thrall and regular Thrall spawn in, you can back up. You can just back all the way up to here. There'll be a lot of explosions. A lot of the time, the Thrall and the other guys will start fighting. Um, unfortunately, they didn't do that on this run, but it's all right. We're going to use fixed odds to break the shields and then Polaris Lance to finish everything else off. When I get closer to the front here, I'm going to pop myself with a grenade, and then we're going to slay out with fixed odds here. There's just so many explosions with this build. It's just nuts. Uh, a cursed thrall spawned behind me. Luckily, I wasn't taken out there. We're going to go ahead and grab this heavy ammo because it only gives us 44 rounds every time we do it. You know the payload stopped whenever it starts beeping like that. Now we continue to take stuff out. I was lucky and able to get a an, an ignition off on that guy behind the shield. You don't want to push too far in there because if you do, every, everything will be shooting at you. We're able to keep Radiant here, so we're able to shoot through the barriers. Again, just stay back. I saw the, the left shrieker there open, but the right one's not open yet, so I'm not too terribly worried about sitting here. Be careful of the shriekers. They will kill you very quickly. A good thing about the unstop over ogres is that you can, you can create so many eruptions or ignitions off of them that everything around them just dies. another ignition we're just gonna keep on uh i'm gonna let this guy unstun i can't shoot him in the head because he's blocked by the payload so i'm gonna i'm gonna keep him from getting stunned for a little bit i'm gonna let him push me he does get a little bit close here um this is where something that is able to stun this type of champion uh will work both of the streakers have opened up now so we're gonna kind of try and work on one shrieker at a time i usually do the right shrieker again i took very just a little bit of damage there from the shrieker and i almost died so just do be careful again i play this part a little bit dangerous but i've done this first part so many times that i kind of know what to expect there are two to three barriers and and unstop at this part we were able to get a barrier out in the open and then we just light them up here again the ogre is on the right so we're just able to continuously proc those ignition shots off of polaris lance i see that the guy to the right is shielding we're going to go and pop his bubble with fixed odds and focus on that guy just because he can heal the unstopped cannot heal there we go that guy's taken out the unstopped's taken out I believe now it's just the boss and a shrieker. So I run forward to pop that shrieker with the explosive shot. That one's down. Now we just got to worry about the shrieker on the left. They're open now. If you don't go down the steps here, the boss won't shoot at you. So there's, there's these like three or four little steps in front of you. Don't go down them. They won't shoot at you. Both Shriekers are taken out. I'm standing on the stairs right now. It's okay. Whatever you do, though, do not go up top right here. Directly to the right of me. Don't go up there. The reason being is because it'll continuously spawn knights in. And you don't want that because it's just annoying. 
I'm trying to take out the thrall on the front of the payload so that way whenever I go to finish this um, this ghost I won't get attacked all right ignition goes off I'm used to running fell terror diddle so I swap to my first slot thinking that I'll run faster but I don't all right run around grab ammo uh, in my opinion, in my honest opinion, the hardest part of the GM is done now. We don't have to... Yeah, it's just the hardest part of the GM, in my opinion, is done. This next area, though, do not go into the room unless it's to start the encounter. You want to stay outside of the room and use Polaris Lance slash Fixed Odds to poke inside. So as you, as you see here, I run forward. We I, I hear the bell. I'm like, all right, it started. All of the knights in this encounter are arc shielded. It is extremely annoying. This is another reason why I suggest you run um, the Concussive Damper instead of the double arc single void that I run just because 90% of the arc damage like this arc damage that I'm taking there could be lessened by concussive damper but I can't run it I would rather have two um, two arc single void than run just a single arc single void again we're just kind of letting since we're radiant radiant precision final blows will cause um, combatants to ignite just ignitions everywhere. Again, don't expect everything in your GM to go exactly like mine. Um, nine times out of ten, it won't. So just play it smart. Play it safe. You do not have... This isn't a speed run. You do not have to, you know, get it done in 30 minutes or less. You just want to get it done. Plus, currently, the weapon is the Uzumi, which I got a few decent rolls, but eh, the Uzumi is not a weapon that people want. So, at least right now, um, I've got some good rolls. Hopefully, it might get a buff or snipers might become something that we want to use in the future. And uh, if it is, then I'll be ready with, an adept, with a few adept Uzumis. Right there, you saw that we were able to weaken that champion with our melee. Go ahead and stun, or not stun, but proc the... Um, we're going to proc the... Oh my goodness. All right, so there. Be careful of those solar grenades. We do not have any solar damage resistance on. Do be careful of them. You can hear them uh, before they, they, come, they come out at you. But just, yeah, do be careful of those... Um, yeah, everything, like I said, everything's not going to go the same as, as it does for you. Um, or not, not everything is going to be the same for you as it is for me. So just remember the biggest thing here is play smart. I go ahead and put, put down my healing rift here because I want to be safe um, from the boss that might be shooting at me. The ogre is hiding his crit spot perfectly behind that pillar. We're able to take out that. Um, that harvester there and in doing so in getting that ignition off with the precision hit it also took out the other champion take him out there we're going to reload real quick these moths are scary my buddies and i ran ghost of the deep last night and i forgot how tanky not only i forgot how tanky the last boss is but also how deadly those arc, those lucent moths can be. Again, we want to focus champions. Everything in the room, not everything, but the majority of the, of the things in the room have to die before the next section starts. So right here, I'm looking, I'm like, all right, there's that guy there. Hopefully they'll be taken out by my Scorch, which they were. We're going to light this guy up. We're not really going to worry too much about that thrall that pushes us. There's two down. Here's how I would use my alt in this section. I don't think I'd do it here. All right, more stuff spawned in. Yeah, I didn't do it here. 
but you can splash yourself with your grenade, pop your ult, and then slay out. But again, there are so many things in this room that when soloing this, you really just want to stick out here in the hallway. There's only a select few enemies that can come out here and do anything to you. So just, you know, it, it's not imperative that we speed run this. It's just imperative that we complete it. It's another wizard. I some I just have to reload there. I missed too many shots. They're still taking damage, so they're going to re-peak me. They're taking damage from the Scorch. Waiting on things, can't see anything. I know I'm getting shot at by the from the left, so I'm not 100% sure where they are. The reason why I said um, you really want an MG here, or, or as your heavy, is just because of this. You can melt, especially with something like fixed odds, you can just melt as long as you're radiant. You can melt through night shields. Those little ones that they spawn in. There we go. Come in. I missed that one. I don't have restoration anymore, but it's alright. I wasn't able to get a kill in time. I know stuff spawning in. There's a barrier that spawns in, in this section right in front of me. So, once you have two of the objectives on the ground you can see those two pyramid things on the ground um, those are the objective and once you get two of them in the third round will have the barrier champs and stuff like that but for now we can focus on the unstops there's just so many explosions going on Uh, the unstop ogres a lot of times don't realize that they are stunned and so they'll shoot at you for a little bit but you can still get stun damage on them the other barrier lines up here perfectly for me so i'm able to take him out that's all three of the champs there were two barriers and one unstop um, on this section I'm waiting to see. I can hear those grenades going off. And those solar grenades, I've died to them way too many times. So you just really got to be careful. This guy TPs. Oop, he's gone. I have no idea where he went. None. So it, it's just this GM has far too many teleporting enemies in it, in my opinion. It's just far too many things can teleport. I do this so that way I can kind of ego challenge a little bit. Get an ignition off with that radiant solar precision final blow. There's only a few more in there. So we come in, splash super, and just focus on taking everything else out. All right, so there are three of those. We know we're done when the objective updates, but also um, when there are three of these on the ground that I'm getting ready to pick up. When you see three of them, those. The captured light, when there are three of them on the ground, you can pick them up. That's all you need to dunk. Uh, and that's this section of the GM. All right, this next part, do not push the boss. Just sit on the opposite side of the bridge on the stairs. There is no reason to push him. Um, his, he's a titan right now, so in his, he'll throw void shields at you. So just be careful of that because they will one-shot you. No matter how many void damage resistance mods you got on, they will one-shot you. Do be careful. This build, though, with the amount with the size and the devastation of the ignitions that we do uh it just kills everything in the room and we're left with only the boss if he does happen to throw a shield at you go down the stairs go back around the corner it will not hit you just get out of there 
you don't want to be there. We were able to get Radiant, so when he popped up his barrier here, anytime the boss pops up his barrier, he's just going to stand behind it. So as long as you're Radiant or have something anti-barrier, it's a, it's a cakewalk. I know here that I can stop shooting at him, but I don't want to because I still see damage numbers. Widow will be hitting the Gwitty on him. And final boss room. Here, this platform that we're landing on right now is our home base. This is where we're going to go. Um, I'll explain it to you kind of as we go, but we're going to run up, start it, run back to there. The boss's void attacks will not track you if they bounce off something. So we want to sit at the back of this plate and just plink at the boss as much as we can. See, we were able to get Radiant before he put up his barrier, and now he's just standing there. Nothing else in the GM will shoot at you other than the Savathun's projections if you're up here on this plate. There, he supers. I go back here. Because he's so far back, I don't want the supers, the, those shields, to arch up and over the front of this platform. So I go back to the back. Once I realize that they're bouncing off this pillar in the middle of the room, I just wait for him to stop ulting. Um, once again, we're able to get Radiant. And now we can just keep laying into him. You want to take out as many ads as you can, because when it comes time to go grab the spears, you don't want all the ads around the spears making it harder for you. The hardest part of this GM is going to be grabbing the spears. Right now, we don't have to worry about it, but when Sabathun's projections show up, it's going to be horrible. Um, not horrible. It's going to be tough. Just, But once again, play smart. Your biggest enemy is yourself. So here, you're able to kind of head glitch over. If you stand back on this plate, on this platform, you're able to kind of head glitch over it to where he'll throw his attacks at you, but they'll bounce off the wall in front of you instead of going to hit you. Once they bounce off, they're no longer tracking. So I know he's going to hide, um, and so I just want to go ahead and take out as many of those guys as I can. I'm able to get some damage off on him, which makes him move a little bit. He supers. I'm waiting for him because I don't know what he's going to do here. He's just he's throwing them at me still, but they're bouncing off the walls. We're going to wait for that super to go away before we do anything else. Um, hopefully the red bars in here will get a little bit antsy and try and push out and We'll be able to proc some explosive shots on them. Oh, here, yeah. So I'm able to get some explosive shots procced. Sometimes you can shoot if they're closer, if he's closer to the back, a uh, little whatever that is building there, then that explosion would damage him and proc him to move out, but uh, he's not moving still, so we're just kind of waiting. That's the biggest thing about this dungeon, or this dungeon, this GM, is, is just be patient. Once again, your biggest enemy is yourself. Just patience. You'll get through it. I can't tell you how many times, probably four GMs in a row, I got to the last phase where there are the two Sabathun's projections, and I would goof up and die to the projections. So just... Once again, I say the biggest enemy of this GM is going to be yourself and not playing smart. I hear that he's moving, so I'm able to... Um, he, I hear I heard his alt there, so I was like, I don't want to be here. We're going to go back up to safety. Here's the spot in, in use. We're able to sit at the back of the plate and head glitch over it. Now that he is despawned, Sabathun's projection will be in the middle. Again, try and just take everything out. All of the ads need to be taken out before you go down and get the spear. Now, not all of them, but you don't want to have any issues going and getting the spear. Because you not only have to worry about Sabathun's projection that you can't, you can't damage without the spear. You have to worry about that, but you also have to worry about peons, and you also have to worry about unstops. So as you see here, I'm using my peripheral vision to... Still aim at the unstop, but dodge the arc attacks from Sabathun's projection. Uh, I take a few hits from them, but it's okay. They don't follow up with attacks 
very often. So it's, you know, if you do get hit, still be safe, but there we go. We're able to take the unstop out. Now it's just add clear and the projection. I was hoping that it would apply more scorch so the bigger the weapon that we use, but that's not the case at all. All right, so here I'm getting ready to run down there and get the uh, the spear. The plan that I use for this is I pull out fixed odds, as you can see. I'll run down here. I'll splash myself grenade with my grenade. Take out anything I need to take out. But right there, playing smart. Sabathun was right in front of me, and there's an animation to pick up to pick up the spear. I was not gonna die. I did not want to die there, so I. Just played it, sm played it smart. Backed up. I didn't want to die. Like I said, I didn't want to die. Didn't want to have to redo all this again for the 25th, 30th time, however many times I've run this GM, trying to get it completed. I was sitting there thinking, I was like, huh, can we blind Savathun? I thought, oh, we can blind him. They move. Let's go. No, they, they didn't get blinded. They just moved to move. Be careful sitting up here because, yes, again, as you see here, there are some peons. Sabathun is essentially a warlock, so be careful of the Nova Bombs. I decide to run back because I don't want to get Nova Bombed. You heard the Nova Bomb being launched behind me. There it is out in the middle of the field. Reloading this. Trying to see if I can proc an explosive shot on Sabathun. I cannot. By this, at this point, I'm just like, all right, we have to go. We have to do this. We have to make a play. I've got my grenade. I've got my super if need be. We just have to do it. I pop this. All right, so I do that so that way I try. I don't die. The only reason I didn't die there, in my opinion, is because of my super. I'm so happy that I used my super there. This is this part right here is the hardest of the final boss because this Sabathun's projection actually gatekeeps the spear. I'm waiting for my grenade to come back here. We want to do it as safe as we can. I have a hundred resilient or a hundred discipline, so uh, we're looking at. I think like 45 seconds max for our grenade to come back. It's back now. Waiting for them to shoot. I'm honestly not sure what I'm waiting here on. Just trying to see how the tracking is. There we go. So we start moving forward. Splash myself. Grab a spear. Jump back. You can use your grenade button to blink. Uh, the spears have a blink ability. I do end up using that in the second part, but in this part, I just... I'm like, all right, I have to play smart here. I just have to... Yeah, just the biggest thing here is playing smart. I'm like, hey, if he's going to go sit back on the right, if Sabathun's going to go back there, I'm going to push forward and start taking out some of these ads. Um as well as going and getting the spear. Do a quick reload. I see that Sabathun's coming back here, and I don't want to take too much damage. I don't know if they supered. I don't know if they are using their arc attack. We're just going to back up. I see that they are not supered and that they are not pushing me, so I feel comfortable enough to go ahead and go forward. We're going to run up, grab this. We're going to run left here. We're going to jump up here. One of these times, coming back with the spear, I get to 1 HP again. So it's really just about playing smart, making sure everything is taken out. If you're doing this on Hunter, I mean, just go invisible. That's honestly, that's all you have to do. If you're doing this on Titan, um, I would recommend running the throwy boy hammers. Uh, you can create sunspots on your way up to getting the spear. Right here, because of my restoration animation, I wasn't able to get the spear. But 
I'm able to keep restoration. So I keep going. I see her Nova Bombs over to the right. Again, if Savathun's just going to sit in the back, I'll sit right here and keep throwing the spears at him. We got one more spear that we got to throw before we can back up. They are not high. They are not um, peaking. So I'm going to go over here, pick up ammo. Then I'm going to go back right, grab the spear, and go up top to the um, to the plate. There we go. I go back up to the plate. Just trying to do as much damage. These only track Sabathun's projections, so they don't track anything else but you can get some decent damage off like that that was a good throw you can get a lot of good damage off from that all right the boss is on the right now do be careful of those void attacks because if they come at you standing back on the plate will not save you because he is elevated now so you have to kind of dip back on the rim of this plate that you're standing on but um, again just play smart be diligent. Look out for everything. I'm trying to figure out if I can get an explosive shot on anything. So that way I can get him to move. You can see where he is based on the little dot above his head. I did not mean to launch that explosive shot at the wi at the wizard, but um, you know it is what it is. It happens. I'm contemplating on moving left here because the boss is just going to stay up there on the right and LOS me. When I jump down, I realize that there are a few enemies to the left. Oh, maybe there aren't. Not, not at this part. He's supering, so we want to just play smart. I can't hear the supers very well, so um, I just want to make sure that I don't see them coming at me. Go ahead and take out that wizard. I was able to get Radiant, and so when he puts up his barrier again, he just kind of sits behind it. Stun lock him as much as he can, get as much damage, damage in as we can. Again, using something like Wish Ender could work with this. I might try and do this GM as well with, with a Wish Ender build, but I don't know, man. Polaris Lance with the seasonal artifact perks just make it effortless. It just makes it so easy, in my opinion. I'm just worried about these little guys walking around. I don't want them to sneak up on me and start attacking me, so we're just t taking a second, taking them out before we go back and start damaging the boss. I don't know if he's supering or not, so I kind of want to be safe here. He's starting to super now. I don't want to get too close to the wall uh, because I don't know if his shields will clip through the wall. Or, yeah, his shields that he's throwing will clip through the wall or not, so I'm just kind of, again, playing it smart. Don't, don't take any chances. Just get it done. We've already been in this in this GM for 38 minutes. Just get it done. Again, we're getting great damage here. That wizard's like, oh, oh no, bro, I'm going to save you. Um, they end up dying in the process. I stand here for a little bit too long because I'm like, I'm going to grab a spear. I'm going to grab a spear. I'm gonna grab a spear, and it takes so long for them to spawn in. So I ended up not grabbing a spear this time, just jumping back here. We have to take out the adds that spawned in while also dodging all of these arc attacks from Savathun on the left. The Savathun on the right, though, will not bother you. So because I stayed, I overstayed my welcome on the left, I missed the opportunity to get good damage in on that unstop champion. To get platinum, you do need to defeat all of the champions, so that unstop will need to be taken out. Um, it's just a waiting game. The unstop champs in this last part will teleport as well, so you might see him go right, and then he'll be back on the left. I'm constantly looking around here for the unstop or anything really to kill. All while, again, dodging those arc shots. 
you can hear the arc shots coming. Um, the prediction on the arc shots from Savathun is pretty good, but if you go up and down and a little bit of side to side, as you see here, they don't really tend to hit you that much. I decide to take a risk. I'm going to go down here, see what shoots at me. I know I'm safe from the Savathun on the left. There was an arc or a solar grenade right here. So, I'm able to take out a few acolytes. We were able to get the bot or the uh, mini boss to stop hiding. And then he goes back to try and hide again. There's that ranged melee that I'm talking about that's able to damage. I'm waiting for those shots on the left to hit me, but I was able to catch him in time and jump up and dodge him. Again, this is another reason why I like heat rises, because I can jump, glide, and still be shooting my gun all at the same time. All right, unstops taken out. Now, we're going to go grab a spear. Grabbing some ammo. Going up here. Grabbing spear. I almost died, but... I, ooh, one HP. The fall damage. I completely forgot about fall damage, and I'd be lying to you if I did not pucker there. Like, I... I thought I was dead. Um, I need to utilize the blink ability more on... On uh, those arc staffs, or on those spears. Hit a quick reload here, and then I realize, wait, we have the holster. We can just let it reload for us. Less downtime. Still dodging. I'm contemplating. I'm like, all right, do I go or do I stay up here and look for stuff? Wait, do those things keep going? No. Um, that's ADHD brain for you. Take him out. Take a little bit of damage there. Splash yourself. They are going to throw a, um, a vortex at us, so just be careful. See, I need to do that every time, picking up the spear. Just go grab it, blink back. Go grab it, blink back. That's the real strat that you need to use. I Also, I do all these blind. Um, I know the GM because I've run them with friends before, but I've never soloed these GMs, so... Just basing off of the the artifact, the seasonal artifact, and all the mods that it has, Polaris Lance is just super strong right now. So that's why I choose to use it. I'm ready. I can't wait for Ark and Void to be in the limelight. Like, give everything that Solar has on the current artifact, give that all to Ark. Um, not paying attention there. One more ball would have killed me, but um, we're kind of back to paying attention now. I'm just looking for acolytes. I'm looking for anything that I can take out that'll make my trip to the spear a little bit easier. Go ahead and splash this. There's nothing there to get my restoration back. I still don't have my restoration. We're half HP. We're one HP. We're still going to go for it, though. Hindsight's 2020. These plays are not very smart, but it works. Like I said, the biggest enemy in this GM is going to be you. You just, you got to play smart. Use the right equipment. I wonder where he's shooting at. I was like, hmm. Maybe they'll continue to just shoot up in the air. Nope, they're going to shoot at me. Waiting for them to shoot that, and then we go. We have our grenade. We're going to be able to pop our grenade. I didn't grab the spear because of the grenade animation. Again, that's the second time. Be careful jumping with the spear, because sometimes it'll move you in a weird direction. One more spear, and that one will be taken out. I'm checking my phone here, I believe. I, I got a text message, so I'm looking at that real quick. But 
it was just a notification or it was just a notice or a reminder I should say so we're good and he shoots and we go right now he goes all right keep going that solar grenade is an issue but it's not going to hit us right here i just need to do this every time grab go back and blink grab go back and blink it's just super easy all right now that the left guy's taken out it's you're just kind of chilling you're home free you're you're just now you can after i use everything on the spear i'll go back over to the left and sit over there on the left and just throw spears at the other sabathun i'm waiting to see if anything spawned in doesn't look like anything did again i'm like hey i'm gonna get restoration back just kidding no i'm not All right, now that he's not shooting anymore, we keep going up here. We're going to take out all the little ads around us first. That guy got taken out by the Scorch. And now, see, so whenever you jump sometimes, it'll, it'll scoot you. But here, I don't, I don't quite understand what happens. We just kind of don't really get shot at too much. We do, but we don't. You'll see. So we'll pick up a spear. And we're just able. I missed that one. See, he moved to the left, so the spear tracking is making it hit the pillar. So we just kind of decide to scoot it back there to the right. Um, you can pick up a new spear every single time you throw it. It just it doesn't do anything different, but maybe allow you to throw it faster. Like, you'll be able to pick up throw, pick up throw just faster. But um, I just want to keep picking up a spear so that way I have a decent spear when the boss spawns in. There we go. They're taken out. Blink. Back to safety. Use the arc staff to just try and do as much damage to anything that we can do. All right, he's alting, so we're going to sit back, relax, take a lay of the land, see what's going on. The boss is behind the building there, so I can't really do too much damage to him. So I opt to, instead of just sitting there doing nothing, just taking out some of the ads that are around the room. There we go. He's going to peek back. We have Radiance. So we're able to just pop straight through the barrier there. He's back behind the little box here. Honestly, just waiting for him to pop out so I can start shooting at him. There we go. We were able to get uh, a pretty early ignition on him just with some of the extra damage. Some, you know, yeah, just get, get, to get some damage on him. We are still radiant. He did pop a barrier, but we're, we're still, you know, A-OK. -okay. Just keep laying into him. You don't have to chase him right here. What I could have done is pop my super ran down there and taken him out. But again, I just wanted to be safe. Um, we're able to get an ignition off on him there or uh, an explosive shot, not ignition. We're able to get an explosive shot on him there. Apply some scorch, get some DOT on him. He moved, so I missed that shot. He's back out in the open. We're still radiant. we go after you destroy the final boss not everything will despawn but you will have to take out the this uh this ghost i splashed myself with a grenade there and have that overshield just because i know everything's not dead um and there you go that is the gm 
So if you guys liked it, make sure you hit the like button. If you think this video will help others, make sure you share it with them. Um, once again, and I'll keep saying this, in my videos, you don't have to use everything that I use. I more want to show you just a strat versus the exact build to use. Um, so the strategy in this one, sit back, take everything out from a distance if you can. If you can't, make sure you have a good uh, machine gun to to push up forward and, and keep your restoration. But again, thank you all so much for watching, um, and I'll see you all in the next one.